And welcome everybody to Yard Goat Hot Stove. I am Jeff Dooley, joined by Chris DeNorfia, who is the 2022 Yard Goats manager. First off, Chris, welcome back to Hartford. Thank you so much. I'm pumped to be here. Well, we're excited you? to have you. Uh, talk about what you learned the most being a, a manager for the first time in, in 2021. I, I think the thing I learned the most was that you never know who's going to surprise you. You know, it, we get here every year with a, a list of guys and we think somebody's going to be one thing and, and maybe there's something better. Maybe there's something worse. Maybe there's something just a little bit different. So um, we can never have the luxury of, of giving up on anybody. And so we come here every day ready to work and ready to make guys better. And more often than not, the guys are surprising us with what they bring to the table. Finish this sentence for me. The most enjoyable part of the game day experience for me is hanging with the players, just getting to know them, forming relationships and, and being a part of their lives and their journeys. This is such a, a unique experience for them and, and it doesn't last forever. And for someone who's dealt with a beginning and an end to the career, I know what a special time this is in their lives. So just getting to know them, I, I think it's, it's the one of the coolest things. Chris, so much has been talked about in analytics. Talk about as a manager, how you, you balance between all the new information that you have access to and, and absolutely what you need to know in going into a game. Well, I've, I've said this all along. I, I've, n analytics never really scared me uh, as a player or as a coach. Um, we're just talking about baseball, that's it. And we're assigning some numbers to some things that didn't have numbers to before. So, it, we can trust our eyes and, and we can right. and we can use them as well but but the numbers aren't going to lie to us and and they're gonna they're able to guide us and guide the players and, and to areas where we need improvement or or showing them what they do well and getting them to focus on those things so um the numbers never really scare me about it if anything it, it takes some of the uncertainty away from it and allows you not to second guess yourself. Are there certain categories where you'll look to maybe get a little bit more information, something that is maybe more important than another that you find yourself constantly looking at? We need to keep an eye on this because this is telling a story for us about that player. Well, for me, the last year being in a chair where I had to make some decisions, um, especially it's with your bullpen usage okay. and when you're coaching third base, how aggressive you want to be on the bases. Um, those are two situations where the numbers can help you. They can really, they can really guide you and, and give you more certainty. Um, it, it is a really telling when you start seeing numbers about pitchers going to third. You're starting pitcher going the third time through the order, and and it's a real thing. Uh, the numbers skyrocket. So how you can manage your bullpen based on that and. Um, from a third base coaching perspective, just knowing what your run expectancy is. Um, if there's a situation where traditionally it might be a bunting situation, is it, is it advantageous or is it not? Are you just giving out a free out or are you making sure that you're gonna put yourself in a position to score the most runs in that inning? What is the biggest challenge for your players, your hitters and your pitchers in, in terms of what is the good knowledge I need to know and what can be overloaded? Well, unfortunately, all of it can be overloaded. So each guy is an individual and what works for one is not gonna work for another. So that's where the relationship part comes into it. You have to be in there in the cage every day with them or in the bullpen and, and get to know them and see their eyes light up when you present them with something or see that kind of fog right. <laughs> where you just know it just went in one, one ear and out the other. And our goal is the same, it's to get the results that are gonna get them moving up the ladder and every guy's gonna be a little bit different. So that's that's where kind of the relationship and the nuances of, of, of that to baseball. You had two players from last year's squad reach the big leagues, Ryan Feltner and Julian Fernandez. And, and for Feltner, he went directly up from Hartford. How proud are you as a manager to see this happen? And, and talk about, bring us a little bit behind the curtain, how that happens. And I can only imagine how it feels to be in the clubhouse and be a teammate of these two guys. Yeah, that was a crazy day. I, Julian, we knew he was going to get there. You know, he he came in and he was a raw. He, he had missed a couple years from some injuries and, and he was a little bit raw in spring training. And from the get-go, you could tell he was engaged in getting the things done that we told him he needed to do. And it wasn't because we were trying to get him to be a good double-A player. He, we knew that with the stuff he has, if he could do X, Y, and Z, 
he's going to pee in the big leagues. And he said, okay. And then he got good at X and then he got good at Y and then he got good at Z and we said, see you later. And it was a special thing for a player to buy in that much and to have that kind of focus and, and for us to have that kind of effect on him. And, and it was fantastic. And now he's going to be a big leaguer. Um, you know, as for Feltner, that was like a rocket ship. That was, that was a great day. And, and every time somebody gets called up, whether it's to AAA or, or, or the big leagues, it, it's a, the guys love each other here so much. We're such yeah. a family that it's a special moment. And for him to just get that, like a surprise upon a surprise. Yo, was, by the way, you're pitching against the Braves this weekend. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know I haven't hit you much this year, yeah. but you know, why don't you grab a stick and take it with you? So, right. Oh, uh, no, it's, that was a really cool day. Chris, fans are always asking me, are the GOATs going to be good this year? What does the roster look like? And listen, it's way too early for that at this point. But that being said, the Rockies have so much talent in their minor league system. And, you know, as we've seen the last several years, at some point, these guys are going to maybe be this year, could be next year. But they're going to play in Hartford. For sure. Um, we have a lot of young talent. And, you know, for the hits we take for our minor league organization in general, I don't, I don't think there's a whole lot of basis on to it if you look at our lower levels our our latin american players fighting down there in dominican our our a ball teams um there there's just a lot of really good raw talent down there and, and we'll see how they shake out and obviously this this is a big jump this level and when guys can come here and they can be successful they have a really good shot at making well, let's take a look at your playing days. An outfielder drafted by the Cincinnati Reds, uh, brief kind of breeze through the minor leagues, and you make your major league debut in 2005. Uh, talk about that day. I like how you say breeze through. I don't remember it as being that. <laughs> it was just a couple of years. Yeah. I've seen guys there longer, but yeah, you, you get up there. through, and then I'm 30, and I'm like, <laughs> what happened? Right. <laughs> you get up there, though, and you get up there to stay, which is important. They always tell me that the toughest thing is to get there and stay, and, and you did. You know, I figured it out somehow, <laughs> um, but it, it was a it was a bumpy road. There aren't too many straight shots, um, and it's a lot of perseverance. It's a lot of a lot of luck, a lot of being in the right situation and, and seizing that moment and not missing it. Um, but it, it's it's a fun ride. You know, I, I like to think of it as a as a roller coaster. There's there's fun parts to the roller coaster, and there's not so fun parts. And, right. and if you can get to the end of it and you had a good time, I think that's all that really matters. You played in Cincinnati, Oakland, San Diego, Seattle, and then went to the playoffs with the Chicago Cubs. What are some of your favorite teammates along the way that you played with in the, in the big leagues, and maybe even some that you got to be close with in the minors? Well, I, one of them who just retired, actually, and John Lester, he, he, he'll go down as a, as a legendary teammate. Just his, his generosity, his engagement with everybody. Um, Did he have an effect on you as a, as a player? Yeah, yeah. I, I, he was towards the end of my career, obviously. Uh, so he was actually a little younger than I was, and and he just has a way about him, a presence to him, and, and he's so generous with his time and and his money. To be honest with you, I mean, he, he you'd never have to pay for dinner with him. And wow. It was it was just that kind of guy that that would take you under his wing and, and make sure that that you had that sort of experience that everybody dreams about when when you play in the big leagues. After you playing days, you had a chance to become a coach in the big league staff with the Cubs in 2019. And I want to ask you, how did working with, with Joe Madden help you kind of range from a player into a coach and learning from uh, a guy that I know is a lot of, he's got a tremendous reputation. Yeah, I, I was actually just texting with him yesterday and, and I mentioned to him, I, I, can't, I can't count how many times Last year, I, I was thinking to myself in the dugout, like, what would Joe do? Here? Is that right? Yeah, it, it, sort of a guiding light, a beacon, if you will, would just be like, I, I think this is what Joe would do. And, and then I try it out. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, just like any decision you make. But um, to have a guy like that be an influence on my life and in my career, it was something really special. Well, we're thrilled. I know I speak for the entire organization as well as the fans. We're, we're tickled to death that you're back. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be a fun 2022. Appreciate the time, Chris. Can't wait for it. All right. Kristen Norfia joining us on Yard Goats Hot Stove. Thanks for watching, everybody.